Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, brethren and friends who are watching with us in our online um, uh, internet service. Thanks be to God for this wonderful time. I hope that you enjoy your lunch and also the Sunday school. Thank you for the teachers who have taught us a wonderful lesson from the Word of God. And at this moment, so as we always do in our church, uh, let's have a moment of silence, please, as we pray for this service to be once again a blessing to us and also to God. And while you are praying, I will, uh, would like to quote uh, verses from the scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. A gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful once again for this time. Thank you, Lord, for our morning service and our Sunday school. And now we are here in our um, last service for this day. We'd like to just um, say that we are blessed and we are so privileged, Lord God, that we are worshiping a true living God. Lord, help us, Lord, to once again be challenged and be changed by your word. And I pray, Lord, that our hearts will uh, be ready, O oh Lord God, to receive thy word. And I pray, Lord, for our brethren uh, who are in their uh, houses. I pray that you uh, bless their lives and um, uh, keep them safe, O oh Lord God. And our brethren as well here, thank you, Lord, for their presence. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather in, O oh Lord God, uh, to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, all the things that will be done, O oh Lord God, today will give glory, O oh Lord God, to your precious name. Thank you, Lord, for this um, day, and thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, so are you ready to worship God? Yeah. Amen. Are you excited? Yeah. Amen. So we have that kind of energy uh, this afternoon. All right, so I believe we have a wonderful day. So let's start uh, our service with some singing, and we have a, a song leader. Okay, naman ako ngayon. Okay, so let's call um, Brother Christian to come to lead us in singing. Thank you. Amen. Siguro na surprise kayo. Ano? Na surprise din ako eh. <laughs> Amen. So now let's uh, worship the Lord in our singing. Let's uh, let us sing loud and proud from the bottom of our hearts. And now I would like to uh, ask you to, to please stand. And our first song is uh, Onward Christian Soldiers. John so Bye. 
onward Christian soldiers marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before number three onward then ye people join our happy tribe and with our sure voices in the triumph song glory loud and honor unto Christ the King this true countless ages men and angels sing us here are soldiers, yeah? soldiers of Christ. Okay, uh, before our uh, second song, uh, I would like to ask uh, Brother Alex, uh, after, after the second song, uh, to open us in a prayer. Our second song is, uh, When the Road is Called Up Yonder. So, I hope when the Lord called us, and if He will make the roll call, we are present. Alright? Alright, so, Amen. Ready? When the trumpet of the Lord's a sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, and the word the save of earth only God are sure, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise And the glory of the resurrection share When His chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder 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 I'll be there Beautiful uh, singing. Now I would like to call Brother Alex. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord Almighty, O oh Lord, we come to you this afternoon, humbling our hearts, O oh Lord, because I know we are serving the Lord of Lords, Almighty God. O oh Lord, Thank you for this time, for allowing us to gather as a church. Bless this time, O Lord, and uh, Lord, uh, use this time to teach us, O Lord, through thy words, rebuke us, forgive us, and teach us, O Lord. And thank you for the time, O Lord, that you always been to us, even in the darkest hour or even in our triumph in our life. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, I pray for this time, Lord, our uh, preacher this afternoon. Uh, I pray for, for him, Almighty God. And as we prepare our hearts, Lord, prepare our hearts 
to receive thy word. Thank you once again for your goodness to us. O Lord, you are our God, our Savior. Teach us to move forward, redeeming the time, O Lord. As we run our race in our life, Almighty God, Lord, give us strength. And Lord, once again, thank you. We honor you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Alex, for that uh, prayer. And now, before we go to, uh, to the special number, uh, the preaching of the Word of God, and for the choir, uh, let's sing our uh, next song. And uh, the title is Until Then. So, until then, you have to be uh, faithful to the Lord. All right, so, are you ready? Let's sing uh, Until Then. <laughs> ready, ready, ready. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward. song. Praise God for that. And now, uh, I would like to call our uh, pastor. Oh, no. <laughs> the choir first. <laughs> After the choir is uh, Pastor Sam. Thank you.
darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, I stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Amen. Praise be to God for that. Where do you stand? On the solid rock. Okay? You're not seated. <laughs> but praise be to God for that wonderful song. Thank you, choir, for inspiring us once again of the message of the song. And that solid rock is our the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? So, once again, good afternoon. Mga wala ng energy. Good afternoon. Amen. So, sa iba, good morning. Okay, in the Philippines, they are, uh, I believe, 4 o'clock a.m. Okay, their time in the Philippines. So, good morning sa kanila. I don't know if there's anyone watching us today. <laughs> or maybe Mrs. Lamson. <laughs> so, good morning po sa inyo. Yan. And thank you also for Brother Christian for leading us the songs, amen. And praise be to God for our men, for their willingness and availability uh, for God's use in this um, pulpit to, to minister us and once again to be used by leading us in some singing. So thank you very much, Brother um, Christian. All right, so uh, at this time, we are going to have our offering and our ministry of our church. May I call on ushers, please, to please come as the way of our uh, ministry of the church on giving. And this is one of our worship to God. And let's give what's belong to the Lord to be used by His glory. And let's remember uh, the needs of this church and also for our missionaries that we are supporting. We are so blessed that we have a bunch of missionaries in our church. And thanks be to God for that wonderful blessing God has given to us. So my request again, our audience here, to please stand as we give our psalmody um, and sing. Okay, 
Sing it now. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May you call on Brother Jackson, please, to pray for us. Offering. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before thee this afternoon, Lord. Thank you once again, Father, for um, bringing us here safe and sound. Thank you once again, Lord, for the opportunity, oh, Father, to listen to the word and be challenged. And once again, Lord, thank you for the protection throughout the week. Amen. Thank you for protecting our jobs, our health, so we could be able to, uh, to go to work and work for the church, for your ministry, Father, and also for our family. And Lord, please, uh, once again, please accept this simple offering that we have. Just pray that please be the one to bless it. And also, please accept our worship service this afternoon, Father. And once again, Lord, please uh, be with us, and please keep us always joyful in serving you, Father. Once again, thank you so much, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You may now be seated. Thank you, Brother Jackson, for that prayer. All right, so at this time, um, before we hear the message of the Word of God, please uh, um, be attentive in listening God's Word uh, through our uh, senior pastor, uh, Pastor Sam. But before that, we have the special number coming from one of our ladies in our church. And Sister Angie, please come and give us the special number. So thank you very much.
Amen. That was a blessing, isn't it? Thank you so much, Sister Angie, for singing for the glory of God this afternoon. Um, once again, welcome to our church for our second service. And uh, thank God that we have uh, AKA Joel Austin as our song leader. Sa buhok, no? Sa likod. Kahawig, no? Sabi ko sa inyo, eh. Our church is unique, di ba? It's a lot of uh, diverse gifts. So thank you for uh, using your uh, time and talent for the glory of God. And uh, that song is a special song. We know that God is always good, isn't it? Amen. He never ceases to be good. God is good all the time as uh, one of our expression. And it's only the goodness of the Lord that we are here this afternoon. And once again, uh, we have the opportunity and privilege to study God's Word. I'm excited to uh, teach and preach. And uh, thank God for uh, the message that we've been trying to uh, preach and teach here uh, in our pulpit in the church. And once again, uh, it's only by the grace of God that we can be able to rightly divide the word of truth. So uh, thank you for praying for, for us. Uh, I've been under the weather, so to speak, also. But thanks be to God that our health is okay. We could stand behind this pulpit and have a voice to, to speak. And there was just a sudden change of weather, isn't it, if you notice? Biglang lumamig, so medyo nagkaroon tayo ng mga colds. But thank God for His healing mercy. And uh, I thank God for my hairdresser. <laughs> Buhay pa naman siya. And uh, medyo press ko na. So thank, thank God for all His many blessings and answered prayers throughout the week. So we will not magpabanjing um, uh, banjing We will dive into the Word of God. Uh, I hope you are ready to uh, listen and study with me. We will have a Bible study once again this afternoon. And our main text can be found in the book of Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. So we'll just read this passage of scripture. So I'd like to request everyone to please stand as we give honor and reverence to the word of God. I hope you had a good uh, lunch. Uh, here in the church, uh, we always have good food in the parsonage, even uh, way back before pre covid isn't it? Era of our church. Because we're Baptists, we love to eat. And uh, you, know that, you know that you're still alive if you have an appetite to eat. Uh, when it comes to the church, uh, a living church is a learning church. So that's why we have Bible studies, amen? We have Friday, we have Sunday school, we have services both morning and afternoon. And you have your own personal study of God's word devotion. Because we cannot stop learning. We cannot stop progressing in knowing uh, about our God, about His Holy Word, the Scripture, because even in our Sunday school this afternoon, oh, the Bible is so inexhaustible, so much things to ponder and study. And the Lord God Almighty commanded us to study His Word precept by precept, line upon line, isn't it? Uh, I believe that's supposed to be our desire and goal as a Christian while we are here on earth, to know more about our Creator, our Savior. So we will just read uh, verses 11 to 13, all the way to verse 14 of Romans chapter 13. Then we'll have a word of prayer. So let's read it all together. Romans 13, verse 11 to 14. Now, and that knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God and Abba Father, we bless your name. We thank you. We praise you for who you are, for what you've done, and for this blessed privilege that we can come together as a church, as a body of believers to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we know, Lord, that um, our spiritual cups has been already been blessed, been filled since this morning when we uh, look and ponder upon your word all the way this afternoon. But we know, Lord, that there's still room for more this afternoon service that we can once again, Lord, look upon your word. And once again, as a collective body of Believers, we'd like to ask you for your forgiveness once again, Lord. 
and your cleansing from any sins that you can see in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our actions, in word or in deed, we plead for the blood of Christ uh, to cover them and wash them away. We confess them to you, Lord, our inab- inabilities and our shortcomings. We ask you, Lord, to be our teacher this afternoon. May your Holy Spirit be the one to illuminate us. Lord, I'm so limited. I'm so uh, uh, not capable, Lord, in, in expounding your word apart from the anointing of thine Holy Spirit. So we once again ask you to be in our midst and we claim your promise that when two or three are gathered together in the name of Christ, he is in our midst. And we truly believe with all our heart that Christ is in our midst today because we are gathered in his name. So we pray that your blessings be upon us. May something that will be said, Lord, uh, will give a blessing to our spiritual lives that we'll be able to Ponder upon it, meditate upon it. It will be uh, an energy for our spiritual walk with you. And most of all, we'll be able to share it to others and live it out to give you glory in our, in our lives. And we pray that you bind the work of the enemy. And we pray for your safety and your protection in this place, in this sanctuary, as your people uh, covenant together to hear your word. And we pray for our brethren and friends who are watching, uh, live streaming, wherever they are. May you bless them. Uh, Keep them also, Lord, focused and attentive to thy word. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may all be seated. Thank you. All right. um, We always mention, uh, did you have a good lunch? Amen. Because a good physical lunch after the morning service will condition you for the second service, isn't it? Did you have your coffees? Amen. I hope you did, because... As we always said, this time is an unholy hour for a Christian. It's a time of siesta, diba? For the secular world, but we're still here in the church. Amen? Still have the desire to read and study God's word. So um, let me give out a joke, something humorous, I I hope so, uh, to wake you up. And uh, there you go, stretch those backs, you know, stretch those eyelids. And um, what do you call a nun in a wheelchair? None, N-U-N. What do you call a nun in a wheelchair? All right, ako rin yata ang sasagot sa akin, joke. <laughs> Para napag-isip kayo, ha? Diba? Ito ang sagot, virgin mobile. Don't delete me. <laughs> All right, so, hmm. It's dawning, it's dawning. Amen? Ano pa ba? Ang joke ko dito. Ang naabusan na ako. Ha. You know that there are seven types of rest that we all need? Uh, isn't it you love to go to church in person when we are able to go to? Because we find a spiritual oasis, a spiritual rest when we hear God's word. When we see the lovely face of our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Diba? Kamusta? Hey, kamusta na? So you feel calm, you feel uh, at ease. Kasi, you know, I'm in the church of God. I'm in the sanctuary, the presence of God in this place. But they said that there are seven types of rest that we all need. Seven because it's the number of perfection or completeness. First is the physical rest, more sleep, naps, deep breaths, relaxation, stretching, physical rest. Mental rest, how do we derive mental rest? Music, when we hear classical music or good music that we love, it calms us down. That's why um, Sister January's uh, cousin, Mara Herrera, is a musical therapist because they can use music to calm some patients. Uh, and we all uh, can relate to that. Um, meditation and silence can attribute to mental rest. Sometimes we just want some quiet time, diba? Right? And uh, divorce ourselves from technology, from social media, uh, every now and then silence. Yeah, no man is an island, is a silence, you know? Where can you go to an island where there's no man? Go to the Philippines. There's 7,107 islands. Pick one. Amen? <laughs> Next is emotional rest. Uh, how do we get rest from emo- our emotions? Uploading emotional baggage, talking to a good listener, therapy. Uh, I was talking to one of our young people and I always ask them what they want to be when they grow up or when they go to college, what course they like to pursue. Uh, one of them said, I want to be a psychiatrist. 
I want to study psychology. Why? Because my dad is a psychologist, and she, he's a psychiatrist, but in the manual sense. He's the manpower <laughs> behind the doctors. But I want to be the one just sitting and telling people what to do and get paid. You know, so oh, that's good. That's good. Huh? So we need uh, emotional rest by uh, talking to a friend who's a good listener or some therapy. Then creative rest. How do we get creative rest? Reading a book, taking a walk in nature. How many here are nature lovers like me? One of our favorite songs as nature lovers is How Great Thou Art. Amen? Because when we look at those verses, when we see the birds singing, the woods, diba? we just praise God in all that there's a creator of all things. Beautifully created. Even though our world was placed into a curse. We live in a fallen world. So uh, there's also social rest. Uh, catching up with an old friend or just simple conversation with them. Taking a break from socializing you know, with uh, multi-medias. You know, and uh, some of you can relate to this. You haven't seen a friend, a close friend, a best friend for years physically. But when you gather and you meet each other, maybe in a restaurant or somewhere, you just like abruptly catch up. There's like a camaraderie. There's like a kindred spirit. In just a few minutes, you already know what's happening in both of your lives. And you're like already exchanging laughs and you're already both crying and all those stuff, you know? Uh, that's good. We need a friend like that every now and then. Amen? Then, of course, there is the sensory rest, turning off devices and screens, finding some quiet time. So this is very, very much applicable to our young people, to our students, because of virtual learning. They've been in front of the screen, or our workers who work at home, like what, 10, 12 hours a day, and uh, our senses are always active. You know, all the five senses are active because you want to keep up with the demands of work. So sometimes we need those to be rested. So turning off, diba? And then, of course, there is the spiritual rest. Doing things that give you sense of purpose or meaning. And I tell you, what we're doing this afternoon, studying God's word, is a good purpose. And it is well-meaning activity. Because the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Isn't it? So... We all need this rest. So, but right now, don't rest on me. Don't take a siesta. Uh, even if you're feeling like, oh, Pastor Sam, he always preached so long. Well, anyways, we only see each other once a week. Anyways, amen? Or twice or thrice. So I'll take the opportunity to speak as long as I could because next Sunday I won't be speaking. We have a, a guest speaker. All right, so we will go to our text of Scripture, Romans 13. What time is it is the title of our message. But if you look at the context of Romans, and as I said before, Romans is one of the greatest books you'll ever study. I believe our ladies in their Sunday school is... You're done already? Wow. I remember I started a series of messages in the book of Romans, and then I found out that the ladies are studying it in their Sunday school, and I said, whatever I'm going to say, they already know. <laughs> because they are studying it word for word. And uh, it's a blessing. They said, if you want to know doctrine, this is one of the manifesto of the Christian faith, the book of Romans. It's a great, great book to study. But in Romans 13, as we look at the context of our scripture, it says there, uh, the heading is honoring our authority. And this is just a side note, and it's very applicable in what is going on right now in America. As you know, we just had... Uh, the election and the inauguration of our new president. So what would be our responsibilities, uh, secularly speaking, toward our government, which is God-ordained? It says in verse 1, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. So God ordained the government. God ordained three basic institutions in our society. Of course, first is the family that's composed of the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, and the children, and the government, and of course the church, three basic. Verse 2, whosoever therefore resisted the power or the authority, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resisted shall receive to themselves, what? Damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. This also speaks of our police, our military, people in authority to keep, the Bible says, 
the peace, isn't it? The tranquility in a society. They are God-ordained. But uh, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil, will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, that thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. So if you are a criminal, you do wrong things, be afraid of the authority because they're supposed to be the tools, instrument of God to give justice, isn't it? But what if you ask, how about if the rulers are evil? You know, like in a communist country. Uh, Proverbs 29, verse 2 will be applied. You know, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Amen? Four years ago, we were sort of like rejoicing. <laughs> but when the wicked bear it rule, the Bible says, the people will mourn. So there's another instance in the book of Acts that there's an example there of the apostles when they were persecuted for righteousness sake, when they're preaching the gospel, and they declare we ought to obey God rather than man because God is our supreme authority. He, our first allegiance and our loyalty is to God. So when the government starts telling you to do evil, who will you obey? God, who is the supreme authority, absolute authority, or man? Diba? But praise be to God that we don't have that in our history yet, in the point that we don't have the freedom or liberty to gather to worship, to exercise our faith, isn't it? We still live in a free country, amen? By the grace of God. So our responsibility is to pray for our rulers, for their authority, because the Bible says they are the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's why I support our police, our cops. They are not perfect, but they are God-ordained to put peace and tranquility in a society. And thank God that America is a Judeo-Christian-based nation. Amen? That's why we've been blessed for the past uh, almost 300 years because they are our founding fathers who believe in the uh, absolute authority of the word of God. The constitutions and bylaws of this great nation were der derived from the moral principles of the word of God. That's why we are a Judeo-Christian nation before. But there's something happening right now, isn't it? So in verse 5, Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Verse 6, For this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render, for, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. That's why we pay our taxes. Amen? Because it's one way that we fulfill our civic duties, our secular duties. You may ask, what if my taxes is used for the wrongdoing, for evil, in funding abortion, and this and, and that? You know? What should I do? You know, you still have to pay your taxes because IRS will, you know, <laughs> try to find you. And that's why we have to pray for our leaders to have the wisdom, you know, to have the fear of God. And then it says in verse 8, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. We just had a message this morning that the greatest uh, virtue of love needs to be exercised uh, by Christians to one another and to the world, isn't it? For this cause thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in saying namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So a Apostle Paul here gave us the second half of the commandment, man's responsibilities toward one another. And it was summarized by this one commandment that, of, of course, Christ also summarized. The, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, it can be summarized into two. The first half from commandments number one to four is to love God with everything you've got, isn't it? And then the rest, our responsibilities toward our neighbor to mankind is just to love thy neighbor as thyself. It was summarized. And the Bible says that in, two, in these two commandments, hinges all the law, all right? And then in verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. What a wonderful word, love. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. All right? Christ came who is the epitome of love. He is the demonstration of love and he fulfilled all the law. And he loved us and he died on the cross. And then we went to verse 11. And that, knowing the time. 
knowing the time. So last, a couple of Sundays, we've been studying about that phrase, knowing the time. So first, we will have our uh, first verse uh, in Hebrews chapter 1. Let's turn there, and Brother Gilbert will help me. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, when we had a, a brief um, bird's eye view, so to speak, synopsis of uh, Bible-believing faith, you know, you know, in our sign there, before you come to the church, you see that we are a Bible Baptist church, isn't it? We are a Baptist, Bible believing, you know, because the Bible is the source of our authority and faith and practice and standard. And you see there that we are also pre-tribulational, pre-millennial, isn't it? Uh, big theological words. But it simply means that we are dispensationalist. We believe in the dispensation in the scripture because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, God, who at sundry times or in many portions and in diverse manners, different dispensation, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So the beginning of the last days is actually when Christ came into this world 2,000 years ago until this period is part of the last days. Right? Had in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. But how did he purge our sins? When he died on the cross. Amen? When he shed his blood and then he rose again from the grave. He purged our sins once and for all. After that, he was here for 40 days and he ascended up into heaven and he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. And I love our studies in the men's Sunday school about Hebrews. It's just a good subject for us because just the title of the book Hebrews, it's written for the his, the man, and the his has to bruise the coffee. Amen? So it's very biblical. <laughs> Hebrews. And if you can summarize the book of Hebrew in one word, is the word better. That Christ is way, way better than the Old Testament sacrifices, than the Levitical uh, sacrifices, than the Old Covenant. So he is much better. When we read he being made so much better than the angels, doesn't mean that Christ, like the Mormon teach, is just like a created angel because an angel here just simply means a messenger like in 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 the book of revelation the angels to the church of ephesus or the pastor or the messenger so christ is the messenger of god himself because he is the fulfillment of all the prophecies of the law the logos the word of god was incarnated in the flesh and he is the ultimate revelation of who god is jesus christ amen so he is that messenger so it says there in verse 1, God who at sundry times and different manners, dispensationally speaking, spake in time past unto the fathers. Then we turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I'm just laying the groundwork of our study as a review. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2, a very familiar verse of scripture. Um, we'll start in verse 14. Of course, this is in the context of Apostle Paul reading to Timothy an advice on personal conduct and relationship. Verse 14, it says there, Of these things put them in remembrance. Uh, I heard that the best way of teaching is by repetition. Amen? You know, you can preach about John 3, 16, 10 times, and still you'll be blessed by it because there's so much truth. So the same thing when we study God's word. Sometimes we heard it before. It just needs to be reminded. It needs to be said again because... We will grow and we will learn by repetition. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about the words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show themselves, thyself, a proven to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, Apostle Paul here admonished us as New Testament believers to rightly divide the word of truth. In the Bible school, there is this, what we call hermeneutics. Hermeneutics expose, how to rightly divide the word of truth, uh, to whom it was written, when it was written, why it was written, how it was written. You have to study the context. So we need to study and to 
So we will not be ashamed of ourselves when somebody asks us of a question, isn't it? Of the hope that is in us. So, and we will not fall into false teaching and heresy when we know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Then let's look to 2 Timothy 3.16. All right? 2 Timothy 3.16. All right? This is in the context of a coming apostasy that Apostle Paul is trying warning Timothy, a, a young pastor. And we can start in uh, verse 14, 2 Timothy verse 3, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And then we see here, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or believers may be perfect. Does, does that mean sinless? No. It means mature, uh, rooted and grounded in the faith, truly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So last Sunday we told you that the Bible is written to us but it's not written for all of us, isn't it? It simply means there are portion of Scripture when we believe in dispensation that are written solely, like promises or covenants to Israel alone, to the church alone, to the Gentile world alone. Some are written for the future, some are written for the present. So we need to rightly divide the word of truth. But all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So how did God give us His word? There are four means, all right? First is revelation, isn't it? God revealed himself to 40 different authors in the Bible in a span of 1,500 years. We have David, we have Moses, of course. You know, we have the, the apostles and different writers, 40 of them. So he revealed himself to them by revelation. And then inspiration, meaning God breathed. Um, let's have a verse of scripture there. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12 to 21. Okay, let's go there. Second Peter, I believe, chapter 1, verse 12 to 21. All right? Uh, here is Apostle Peter writing his second epistle uh, to be grounded in the truth. He says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you, away, you always in remembrance. He's reminding his reader of the things of God, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yeah, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle or this earthly body, to steer you up by putting you in remembrance. You know, when we have Bible study, it's good that we are being steered up. Not to contention or division, but we are steered up. I mean, our, 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 our appetite is being, you know, uh, uh, enhanced. I hope you, you feel that way when you have Bible study, amen? Because this book is alive. It's powerful, and there's so much things to learn. There's so much things to be reminded of. It says there, you know, to steer you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this, my tabernacle. He was about to die, even as our Lord Jesus Christ had showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that he may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. As we know, Peter was crucified upside down. And the 12 apostles, excluding Judas, which is replaced by Matthias, Matthias, we're all martyred, isn't it? So it says in verse 15, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses. That's why the, the first meaning of the word apostle is uh, and a first-hand eyewitnesses of his majesty of Jesus Christ because the apostles were with Christ in his three and a half years of ministry. And Apostle Paul also was with Christ, eyewitness, because Christ trained him in a Bible school called the Arabian Desert. You know, when he appeared to him in, in the road of Damascus, and he personally taught Paul, Jesus Christ, who already ascended up into heaven. So he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He's the last of the apostles, first-hand eyewitness. Verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. First thing that that phrase was 
said of Christ is in his baptism, remember? He's fulfilling the law. You know, before he started his earthly ministry, he was baptized by John the Baptist. Suffer it to be so, allow it to be so. Why Christ has to be baptized? It's not a sinner. That's not an Old Testament baptism. It's a sign that he is the long-awaited Messiah. He's fulfilling the law. And verse 18, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Second thing that they heard, this phrase, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, is when James, Peter, and John were in the mount of transfiguration. Remember? Because they are the inner circle and Christ appeared with, uh, with Moses, that represents the law, and Elijah, which represents the prophets. And he had a communion with them. And Christ was glorified. You know? And the apostles are bewildered and they were said, oh, what a privilege because we've seen the, uh, the glorified Christ. And they said, let's make three tabernacles. Right? Remember that story? And they heard the Father in heaven audibly saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That's the second time it happened. But even though they were there, they've seen the Father spoke to them, to Christ. But Apostle Peter said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That's why when somebody gets up and said, this is what the word of God told me this morning. I have an extra revelation. We will never listen to that person because we have a sure more word of prophecy. The Bible is already complete. We cannot believe anybody that speaks, oh, I heard from God audibly. Oh, I had a vision. I had a dream. Oh, God appeared to me visibly. No, because all revelation is already done. The Bible is written completely. It says that it is a sure more word of prophecy. There's no private interpretation of the scripture. For the prophecy, verse 21, came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved. The same thing. As God breathed, they were inspired. So the Bible does not contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Amen. How about the words of the devil? The words of uh, evil kings? Of course, it's still part of the Bible. Because God is telling the authors to write. They were moved to write everything that God told them. So the Bible were given to us by way of revelation, by inspiration. That's why we believe in the verbal plenary, uh, plenary uh, inspired written word of God. Everything is inspired in this book. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Every jot or tittle, isn't it? Has meaning, is precious in the sight of God. So revelation, inspiration, and then preservation. Throughout the years, God preserved his word. You know, man and Satan tried to corrupt it. There's different perversions Versions, they twist it and everything, but do you believe that you still have the inerrant, infallible Word of God in your hands right now? With this version that we're using, 1611 King James Version? Yes. For more than 400 years, God has used this version to the English speaking people for them to be taught the Word of God, the doctrine, and, and people got saved. Amen? So, we had the preservation and now we have the illumination. When we study it, as a child of God, as a believer, the Holy Spirit teaches us. Of course, with the help of our, our pastors or a mature believer in, in studying God's word. So that's part how God's word can be uh, uh, used by us. And then, of course, there is the application. There is the primary in application of a, a passage of scripture. And there, there can be a secondary application. You know, some are written. Oh, the Bible says that everything here that's written is for our learning. For our example, it doesn't mean that some are written to the Israelite people that we cannot learn any spiritual truth. There are lessons, but when it comes to doctrine, the majority of our doctrines that we believe comes from our apostle to the Gentiles, which is Apostle Paul, from Romans or all the way to Philemon. How about the gospel? Yes, we can also derive some of the beliefs and doctrine that we have in those gospels as long as they reference to other parts of the scripture. And I tell you, we don't really interpret the Bible. We just declare it. Because the Bible interprets itself. That's why you cannot put a passage of scripture, a verse, and take it out of context and take it out from the book of Acts and make it a doctrine. It has to 
coordinate reference to other parts of the scripture if it is so. And in order for us to be helped by rightly dividing the word of truth, we have what we call this dispensational kind of approach to the Bible. All right? We know that the Bible is historical. It talks about the past. The Bible also is good for us in the present. It talks about doctrine. And also the Bible is good for us for the future. It is also prophetical. So let me give you verses about dispensation. I messed this up last, last time because... I think because I was half blind, I put the wrong reference. So we will go through these verses. First verse, where in the Bible we find the word dispensation, I think four times, all right? If you go to your uh, concordance or something. All right, first is uh, 1 Corinthians 9.17. Uh, we have that verse. All right, we'll go 1 Corinthians, and then Ephesians, and then Colossians, all right? 1 Corinthians 9.17. Mabilis mag Bible drill dyan. Alright? Okay. The Bible says, For I do these things willingly. This is a Paul speaking. I have reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. As I said, dispensation is from the word dispensing, disperse. It's just a period of time where God deals with in a specific way. And we studied later on, we will have some diagrams about that. All right, second is uh, Ephesians chapter two, 3, verse 2. Ephesians 3, verse 2. Second time that we can see the word. Oh, yeah, 3, 2, and one ten also. But 3, 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you are. Dispensation of the grace of God. Paul, he's... Is talking about the church age, the grace period, dispensation of grace. And then Ephesians 1.10. I love this. Ephesians 1.10. All right. Let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a lovely chapter. If you feel down and you think you're so poor, you are really rich in Christ. Because there's a lot of spiritual riches from verses 3 all the way to verse... Huh? 14, but in verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth. So this is futuristic, isn't it? The fullness of time. It can talk to the millennial reign, isn't it? When Jews and Gentiles will reign with Christ. So a dispensation, a set period of time where God deals with people. And then... We don't have time to like really expound that then Colossians 125. The last one, Colossians 125. Alright? This is not any new doctrine, this is just Bible that we need to be reminded of. Colossians 1, verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. So why do we study, need to study dispensations? Because, you know, we need some grounding, being rooted in the faith. So we know what are false teachers and heresy. So we will avoid confusion and even contention. You know, so we will avoid uh, these big theological words about, we understand replacement theology, that there is no more Israel now. Everything that was promised to Israel now is for the church. No, no. So we'll know how to debate, not debate, to rightly divide the word of truth when it comes to legalism because we have <clears throat> friends like the JW, you know, the Jehovah's Sicknesses that are taking the wrong dispensation, taking them out of context. Don't you know that they believe that we are already in the millennial reign? And they believe that the Sermon on the Mount is for the Gentiles, so thou shalt not uh, thou shalt be meek, for the, uh, thou shalt inherit the earth. So that's why they're pacifists. They don't believe in um, donating blood. They don't fight for the country because they ro took the wrong dispensation, the wrong application of the scripture to get their doctrine. All right? That's why we don't believe in speaking in tongues, divine healing, faith healing, because those are signed gifts in the book of Acts, which is a transitional book. So we don't believe that you, you have to be baptized to be saved. 
because we believe now in the grace period and the gospel according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the gospel of Christ according to the Paul is the gospel that we preach right now. Don't you know that there are at least five gospels in the scripture? Oh, I thought there's only one gospel. Because gospel simply means good news. All right? Uh, Matthew chapter 11 verse 5, this is Christ preaching about the gospel of the kingdom. This gospel, the good news for the Jews, for the Israelite people that the promise for them to have that kingdom, that the Vedic, uh, the Vedic kingdom, the throne, will be given to them, but not during when Christ came. But it was promised for them in the millennial. Because what did they do? They reject Jesus Christ as the Messiah, isn't it? Even though he showed them signs that he is the true Messiah. They crucified him. They rejected him. So that's the gospel of the kingdom. There's also the gospel of peace in Romans 10, 15. There is the everlasting gospel in Revelation 14, 6 that was preached by an angel. A gospel that was, was preached during the tribulation. All right? Also the same gospel that the 144,000 Jews will preach. The good news that they can still be saved. And don't you know that there is dispensational salvation? You know, that there are times in the dispensation that it's, only, it's not only by faith you'll be saved, but you have to have faith and works. Like in the tribulation, you know, if you don't take the mark of the beast, if you believe the preaching of the 144,000, then you'll be saved. But you have to accompany it with work. Because once you take the mark of the beast, then you'll be doomed in hell. No? So, another gospel, uh, any other gospel in, uh, this, which is a false gospel, which uh, the Judaizers are preaching during Apostle's time, Apostle Paul's time. Uh, meron pang ang full gospel, have you heard about that? That are being preached right now. That's a work salvation, that's a faith plus works, which is not the gospel that we preach during this grace period. And then the gospel of Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. So five, at least, that we can see different kinds of gospel. So let's go to um, the, the diagrams, please. Just to summarize everything I said last week. All right. These are taken from uh, reputable Bible scholars. One of them is Dr. Clarence uh, Larkin, who lived in the 1920s, and he's also an artist. And um, I'm just giving you different views. He believed in the gap theory in Genesis chapter one, verse one and two. So that's why there's an old earth there and, and such and stuff. For me personally, I don't believe in the gap theory in Genesis chapter one, verse one and two, when the Bible says they did the Lord just gave us a narration of his creative work. Because we believe that sin is the cause of death. So if there are already human beings in the first creation, you know, then did they sin during that time? Then what happened to Adam? So that's a whole new study. So we studied about the seven dispensation, isn't it? Quickly. Last week, there is the first dispensation. In every dispensation, there is a man's responsibility. And sadly, men had the failure in making that responsibility, obeying the word of God, and there's judgment. But there is the grace of God for them, isn't it? In every dispensation. So uh, we study that there is, from knowing the time, the day that we live in, in Romans 13 as our main text, there is the time of the Edenic dispensation. And then there's the conscience, the age of innocence, the dispensation of conscience from uh, Cain all the way to the flood and then there's the human government with the Tower of Babel and then in that description there is lit, no? after that is the patriarchal uh, Christ is not God is not dealing in, in the world as a whole he picked up a man out of his sovereign election he took Abraham and he started the Jewish race why did he pick a man to start the Jewish race with that unconditional Abrahamic covenant so in his seed, all the earth will be blessed, isn't it? Because there's a promise in Genesis 3.15 when man fall. You know, judgment came, they were taken out of Eden, but there was a promise that the Messiah would come through the seed of the woman that will bruise the seed of the serpent. And through time, the devil is trying to kill the promised seed. He killed Abel. Uh, there was uh, an evil line, but there was also the godly line of Seth and all the way to Noah, God chose Noah and his sons to repopulate the earth after God judged the whole world with a global flood. Every, everybody died. 
because their wickedness is upon the face of God. Imagine every wickedness you can think of nowadays. In heart and in deed, they were doing it. And God, sukdulan, sabi. God has to punish sin. So that happened. But through Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the world was repopulated. And there came the age of the human government. And God said, you have to scatter. But they disobeyed. Nimrod, the great hunter, the 13th from Adam, uh, instituted a false worship. They start worshiping the sun, moon, and stars instead of worshiping the creator, instead of obeying God. So one world government, one world language, isn't it? One world religion in the time of Babel where babbling happened. <laughs> Their language were con confused. That's the judgment, and they were scattered. And then God has to choose the family of Abraham to start the patriarchal stage, the Israelite nation. Why God chose Israel now? Because God will give them the knowledge of the one true God. God will give them the Messiah. God will give them the scripture to be the light to the pagan world. So after um, patriarchal stage, what did they do? They failed that because they become idolaters. I remember I told you that Jacob wife Rachel that he really loved you know hidden idol that he that she stole from Esau diba and then they went to Egypt and they became a slave they start worshiping also the Egyptian gods so God has to raise up Moses here comes the dispensation of the law the legal law giving them the sacrificial system and everything and we've been studying that's the old covenant the old covenant is conditional, is the law, but man failed because man cannot keep the law. Isn't it? Man is corrupted inside. The law is just a way for us to point us of our si sinfulness, that we need God. And all the sacrificial system is just a foreshadow, a precursor of Christ who would come. And we came to the New Testament, diba? Right? Christ is the fulfillment of the law, so that's the second, the church age, the grace period. Then we look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. If we can quickly go there. That's why Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, are still, don't you know, they're still part of the Old Testament, even though they are just in the New Testament? Because they are still in, under the Old Testament dispensation. They're still under the law. All right? That's why when the thief on the cross in Luke 16 died, he said, Christ said, uh, he said, to remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Christ said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He went to Abraham's bosom, remember? Because hell is in the center of the earth, there was a great gulf fixed. That's hell, that's Sheol, Hades, and there's Abraham's bosom. Where all the Old Testament saints, those who believe on the coming Messiah, those who were doing the sacrificial system, they were kept there. Because Christ did not die yet on the cross. But look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. 15. Uh, this is in the context that the old and the new covenants were contrasted. Uh, we can start in verse 11, Hebrews 9. But Christ being come to a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen. That's what happened when he died on the cross between 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, the old covenant, the law, the conditional, and the ashes of a heifer, heifer or heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more, see, Christ is better, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without to spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, verse 15, he is the mediator of the New Testament. All right? That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they were which are called, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, take note, Bible believers, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. In the Old Testament, who started the Old Testament? Of course, was given to Abraham. Remember, Abraham was called out of the many people to start the Jewish race. And then, remember in Genesis that God uh, has to make a covenant with him. 
and he slept, and they were like animals that were sacrifices. So that's an unconditional covenant. God will perform his agreement with Abraham, even though he disobey or not, that he will make him a great nation, that the Messiah seed will come from his lineage. All right? But in the New Testament, the testator has to die. And who's the testator of the New Testament? It is Jesus Christ. The fulfillment of the law. That's why the, old, the New Testament started, technically speaking, when Christ died on the cross and when he was resurrected from the grave. That's why those people who died before Christ died on the cross were still part of the Old Testament. That's why the thief on the cross went to the heart of the earth, Abraham's bosom, because still Old Testament. Until Christ resurrected from the grave, and the Bible says he led captivity captive. He brought them to heaven. Now when a person died in the grace dispensation, in the era of dispensation of grace, we go straight to heaven. We don't go to the heart of the earth. Because it was already fulfilled that the testator already died. In verse 17, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator leave it. See, so if you know dispensation, you can rightly divide the word of God, who it applies. For an example, in the gospel, isn't it, Christ said to the uh, disciples whom he sent two by two, like there are 70 of them, you know, to go out and perform miracles, diba? Right? To preach the gospel of the kingdom that the Messiah had already come. And they were given this miraculous power. They were able to, you know, cast demons. They were able to heal People who are sick, they were able, able to raise people from the dead. So if you take that doctrine that that is applying to New Testament era grace period, then, oh, Pastor Max should have the power and the sign gives to heal everybody. But we've never seen a Christian raise somebody from the dead, isn't it? Because that certain period of time is only for the Jews, for the disciples, to prove that the Messiah had truly come, you know? And uh, there are passages of scripture we, we see, repent and be baptized so you can be saved. That is speaking to the Jew, not to the Christians nowadays. All right? Did you get me? All right? I don't have time to explain all of that. All right? So that's, that's a good point, that the stator has to die. So Christ is the New Testament, the stator. He has to die first on the cross so we can be ushered into the New Testament. All right? So let's go back to the diagrams. There you go. Next, please. Of course, after the church age is the Great Tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel, and then the millennium. So, ito medyo colored. So, medyo maintindihan natin. Alright? So, just try to read this. It's a biblical history. Just a big picture. And some theologians are saying that the word, uh, the number seven, of course, is a number of completion, of perfectness, isn't it? That's why they said there are seven days of human history. So, di ba we always say, Christ died 2,000 years ago. Huh? 2,000 years ago. So we're now entering on the seventh day. And they're saying the millennial can be the seventh day of the fulfillment of the whole human history. So we're saying we are, the last days, as I said, started when Christ came into this earth and he died. We can say we are in the latter end of the last days, before Christ could come again in the rapture. Why? Because I told you that we're like in the days of Noah, isn't it? Matthew 24, even though that context is about the tribulation. And we know the tribulation, the great tribulation, can never happen until we get raptured first. Before the, the work of the Holy Spirit is taken out of this world, the restrainer of evil, so the Antichrist could come. So we're already in that season where the great tribulation will come because right now we are experiencing of a Tower of Babel so-called world. One world government, one world religion, you know, one world ruler. So as I said before, like COVID-19 is a precursor to condition men to look for a savior, for a messiah, for a solution of man's problem. And digital and travel is like being enhanced. So when the Antichrist comes, he could control everything in this world, commerce. You cannot buy or sell without his knowledge, right? Without, you know, his power. So we're, we're in that Latter days, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, we are living in the perilous times. So a lot of passive scripture that telling us that we are in the latter end of the last days. And of course, one of the greatest prophetic uh, timeline that we're in the last days is when the nation of Israel was reborn as a nation in May 14, 1948. That start the time clock 
of the latter and of the last days. When the Bible says that a generation shall not pass, and then all these things shall be fulfilled. About rumors of wars, about earthquakes, about, about the world groaning and groaning. So, in a nutshell, the world is not get, gonna get better and better. It's gonna get worse and worse. Ay, nakakalungkot naman yan, Pastor Sam. Doom and gloom. So, anong gagawin ko? Nakaka-depress naman yan. But you know, if you're a Christian, if you know the Word of God, I tell you, this is an exciting times. Don't you know that we as Christians living in this day and age, we are given the front seat to see that the Bible is being fulfilled in our very eyes. So instead of worrying, we should be worshiping. Amen? Amen. God is sovereign. His word is true. I'm glad I'm a Christian and want others to be too. Isn't it? Hey, we witness. That's why we support missionaries. That's why we study God's word. So we can bring others to heaven. Amen? That's why it's one of the many, many reasons, one of the very reasons Christ is not rapturing the saints. Because he still, he still wants people to be saved. Because he's not willing that any should perish. You know? So instead of worrying, we should be worshiping. Instead of worrying, we should be waiting on the Lord. Working for him. You know? Uh, uh, watching for him. Isn't it? All the good W's that we should do. So, all right, next all right, the 7,000 years of human history. You, know, you can Google this, you can find it, you know? Um, all right. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Fascinating. Diba? So this uh, demote, demote, or just disperse that God used evolution to create the world. Theistic evolution, millions and millions. Yes, God created, but he used millions of years. No. The young, the earth is young. It's just getting old because of sin. <laughs> the more sin it is, the more decay, deterioration. Because the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Diba, just this week, America not celebrated. Remember the uh, official anniversary of Roe versus Wade. When abortion was legalized here in America. It's what, 60 years in the 1970s? And more than 60 million babies has been aborted. 60 million people who are supposed to be alive. Just in America alone, not including China and other industrialized countries who are communists who don't believe in the sanctity of life. That's why my, one of my main beef in this election is like, we don't support or condone a leader who believe in the abortion of life. We don't believe in the principles of the word of God. We're not voting for a person because of their personality, but we are voting for their values, for their policies, you know, for their belief. If it is far from the word of God, either in any party, you know, we should not give our support. But what had happened? Somebody won. So that's what tells you. We are really at the latter end of the last days. Parang ano eh, parang America na lang humahad lang sa go globalistic goals of this world, of, of some of the elites. Di ba? Huh? But God is sovereign. He allows things to happen. He still rules and reign. This will give glory to his name. And one of the ma my main beef is that America has been blessed because he's the number one supporter and ally of Israel. And just recently, there is a proclamation, an executive, that that support is not gonna be there. So what will happen to the unconditional covenant, you know, between uh, America and Israel that I will bless them that bless thee and I will not bless them or curse them that curseth thee. So I always repeat myself, that's why America was blessed by God because it's a Judeo-Christian nation, amen? Because it believes in, in the moral principles of God's word. But if we have leaders, that's why we have to pray that will not support them, then that will give the enemies of Israel the privilege or the opportunity to attack them. Of course, when they are attacked, they will, the false antichrist, the ultimate antichrist will appear and say, hey, I will solve the problems of the world, I'll give peace. And they will believe until he will break his covenant in uh, the three and a half years of the great tribulation. So we'll see in the, the Bible is, you know, amen? amen? Being fulfilled in our lifetime. That's why we're saying in our text in Romans chapter 13, let's go there. 
So we could finish the message. Amen? I have to finish. Romans chapter 13. And that knowing the time. I said, I want to give you a, a scenario, a, a bird's eye view. What time are we living in now? What time is it? Amen? My, my rich watch uh, stopped working. Is it already 5 o'clock? Okay. What time is it? Oh, 4.15. Thank you. I still have 10 minutes. Now, so it says there, and that knowing the time, now is a high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we ever believed. So that's speaking of salvation nearer than we ever believed. That speaks of the rapture, isn't it? It's nearer now than ever. And remember I told you, I thought we were saved. And there are three tenses of salvation, the past, present, and future, isn't it? Past, we are saved from the penalty of sin which is our justification, we are declared righteous. Present, we are saved from the power of sin, that is sanctification, we are set apart. And future glorification, we are saved from the presence of sin, when we are already in heaven. Amen? So somebody said, I like this, about our salvation. Uh, even though we are not redeemed completely because we still live in the flesh, but thanks be to God, there is that promise of salvation, full salvation, it says, in Christ, your past is settled, your present is covered, and your future is secured. Amen? Amen. I always remember what Brother Bobby uh, taught us or uh, shared. You know, when it comes to uh, glorification or sanctification, that's positionally in the man mind of God, we are already in heaven. Amen? That speaks of eternal security because God knows all things, isn't it? He's transcendent of all time. God has been in the past, in the present, in the future, and in between. He knows everything. So if you're a child of God, if, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Savior, living right now in the grace period in the church age, in the mind of God, you're already in heaven even though you are just here on earth. Isn't it? So that speaks that no man can pluck us out of the hand of God. What if I sin greatly? If you're really a genuine believer, if you've been converted, if you are made new creature in Christ, then you are saved. What changes is your relationship with God? It's because of sin that fellowship will be, you know, cold. That fellowship will be not the same. There will be chastisement. There should be conviction. So the fellowship changes, but the relationship will be there. You'll still be his son. God will still be your father. All right? But if you are truly saved, you can never lose your salvation. Amen? Because it's eternal life. But also it means that you cannot abuse the grace of God. You cannot make, oh, I'm going to go to heaven anyway. So you make it as a license to do whatever you want. No? We're not legalistic, but also we're not supposed to be stupid, isn't it? Because God will judge every sin. You will lose your reward. You will you, you, uh, lose the joy of your salvation. So that speaks of our salvation. Next, please. <clears throat> All right. In every dispensation or ages, there's the failure of man. It's part of it. Okay, next. Uy, magandang background yun eh. All right. <clears throat> All right, that's a review. Next. All right, next. <laughs> All right, next. We covered that last week. Next pa rin. There you go. Sige, alam na nila. Kami, ito. All right. So first, our... We had uh, studied what time is it? According to Romans chapter 13, it's time to wake up. Second thing is it's time to clean up. All right? Is that what we do after we wake up, isn't it? Sino nagki-clean up dito? Naghihilamos, nagtututbrush. Sa mga mag-asawa, kailangan to, di ba? Because once you spoke to your spouse with a morning breath, it's not really, it's not really, not, not really nice. But some just tolerate it. Kasi mag na eh. You know? You're one flesh. So you just put it up. But kidding aside, don't you know the phrase when somebody said, somebody's deodorant is failing? <coughs> somebody said, can't be mine. And never wear that kind of stuff. I remember the story of Pastor Abel. It's so hilarious. He was working in stop and shop. He's a manual labor. So during the summer, you sweat. Even though I, I went to stop and shop a lot of times, I've never found a stop and shop that's warm. It's always cold. Isn't it? Kasi open lang yung mga freezer eh. 
But he had a co-worker who had a very severe BO. And he put up a post, a comment, what should I do? I don't want to offend this co-worker of mine. I need to keep a good testimony. Can you give me an advice? And lo and behold, and dami ng comment. Naging viral siya, no? In your wall. Ang daming suggestion. Ah, hindi mo natandaan? Bigyan mo ng deodorant. You know? How can I tell what's his problem without offending him? Diba? Sabi ng Bible, open rebuke is better than secret love. So yun ang secret. Yun ang sagot. Give him a secret. That's the brand. Diba? Pun intended. Yeah. But look at verse 12 and 13. What do we need to clean up? Verse 12 and 13. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The night here speaks of huh, the enemy's work, the devil, darkness. And the day here speaks of the day of the Lord when Christ is about to come. All right? So let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Old English word. Oh, we don't use these words. Rioting. Oh, yeah. Meron, meron pala ngayon. Rioting. Chambering. Wantonness. So, this imagery in verse 12 and 13 is of like a soldier who was out all night partying. And he passes out in a ditch, in a stupor. And his CEO comes along and say, Wake up! Clean up! And dress up for battle. So, verse 13 tells us three specific pairs of sin. There is the social sin, writing and drunkenness. There is the sexual sin, chambering and wantonness. And there's the spiritual sins, envying and strife. So, we know that Christians have no business being involved in such things. Amen? These deeds of darkness grieve the heart of God. We are to clean up and lay this aside. First is writing and drunkenness. Writing comes from the Greek word that simply means carousing. Carousing. Uh, the Greek meaning of writing. Today it is called cruising or just hanging. As I said, if we don't know where our kids are, we are asking for trouble to find them. It's 12 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? Masyadong late na yun, di ba? Midnight. Dapat anong curfew nila? 9 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? Here in America, when they started driving, di ba? And they want to have their freedom and, and independence. What do parents say as do as a, as a in a Christian home, they just pray harder. Amen. Lord guide them. Lord protect them. Lord preserve them. But we should know, isn't it? We can track them by their GPS in their cell phone. You know, we'll know where they are. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do that with my kids. I have four girls. <laughs> you know, um, mm, caressing, rioting. Most teens take their first drink at a party. Hmm have to ask, why were they even present in the first place there? Diba? So do you know who their friends are? Huh? Rioting and drunkenness. Chambering and wantonness. Next scene. Chambering is living together without the benefit of marriage. Or in our modern terms, shacking up. All right? It's amazing how they have no compunction of conscience whatsoever about this anymore, especially in America or probably in the Philippines. You know? Fornication is just normal. Adultery is just normal when the law says thou shalt not commit adultery. You know why abortion happens? Because of these sexual sins. I'm not saying all of abortion happens because that's the root cause. There's incest, there's rape. But if you just take the Bible and leave it out, the moral things of the Bible, isn't it? Then you will avoid that sin that will progress to something even more miserable. You know, when people who commit that, they are scarred for all of their lives. But the blessing is the grace of God still abounds. God can still forgive. Amen? God can still forgive and, and restore a person who commit these sins. But by the grace of God, we need to pray for our young people that they will not come to that point. You know, society now accepts it as a test drive before marriage. Shocking up. Sabi sa atin, living in. Live in. Diba? God does not, because the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 4, that marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all, because it's the first ordained institution of God in the Garden of Eden. It was blessed by God. Marriage is honorable in all. Even the world or society, even in America, will say, 
Oh, kapirasong papilang yan. You don't, you don't have to, ha- to do it. Let's bypass it. Let's just live together. The Bible is still clear. There's blessing for those who obey the Word of God. Marriage is still honorable. That's why I'm so glad somebody here in the church is going to get married. You know, I'm so blessed whenever somebody gets married and they ask me to mini- become the minister for that. Because you are celebrating a God-ordained institution. You're blessing somebody who's about to start up in this life as a husband and, and wife. They live and cleave, amen? And they will be a unit once again, especially if they are a Christian couple, that they will be a force of God to show the unbelieving world what true family is. Because now family is destroyed. We have a show, even modern family. Isn't it? Mixed marriages, you know, name it. Man and man, woman and woman. All living in the same house, adopting children. And the most people that are affected by this are the kids. They are living in a confused society, chaotic society. So if you're uh, young people here, if you can hear my voice, if you have a Christian home, if you don't have a Christian home but you have a mom and dad that loves you, you are very, very blessed, I tell you. Because half of the marriages here in America are going down the drain and there's so much you know, dysfunctionality. So let's praise God for our family that prays with you even much more that serves with you. Amen? And that's our desire for every family in the church. Not just the mom and the kids, but mom and dad. If that's not happening, just pray, pray. Lord, be merciful, be gracious. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but warmonger, look at this, and adulterers, God will judge. And the Bible is still true. And every man a liar. Amen? Amen. Marriage is still honorable. But you may say everybody is doing it. And by definition, everybody is doing it wrong, evil. Everybody is a warmonger or adulterer. But I, I'm thankful that everybody is not doing it. Amen? We're, we have still like blessed husband and wife and churches who preach on purity, who preach in preserving yourself, in preaching about, you know, God is desiring for people to walk with him in righteousness. What if somebody falls into sin? But God is there to pick them up. God can forgive. God can restore. But we have to teach our children. God is pleased by living a life of purity. You know? Wantonness, next. Is, is that place that we are not shameful anymore. It's a shameless attitude about our sin. You are no longer embarrassed. Actually, American Cable has a show like that, Shameless. They're flaunting their sin. That is just normal. They don't try to hide it all. Matter of fact, they post it online about it without a thought. Uh, and mga soap opera, mga desperate housewives from all the way from Atlanta, all the way to California, isn't it? Now it's a form of entertainment. Uh, they make women, they sexualize women. They just, di ba? Nangyayari to. Morality. Not just here in America, but other parts of the world. Daytime TV is an endless parade of perverts. This is the reprobate mind when you no longer care and things that should make you blush, you now seem to brag about it. Diba? Nakakaawa. Uh, sa San Francisco, there's a day and age there where they took what God tells us about the rainbow and twist it. It becomes the flag of the LGBTQ community, isn't it? And they parade in their scene and there are little children watching them. That this is the new normal. But in the eyes of God, it's still abomination, it's still wrong. But how come society accepts it? Because in Romans chapter 1, it says, they were gave up by God because of the reprobate mind. Because they love sin. But is there any hope for them? Yes, there is. The gospel of Christ can change them. Amen? The gospel of Christ can forgive them. They can change. And we've seen testimonies after testimonies. The worst sinner, the drunkards, the addicts, you know, homosexuality, they've been turned by God's power, by the gospel of Christ. So there's still hope. Uh, strife and envying. From sexual sins, social sins, it shifts to spiritual sins. You know? He shifts from the gears from the flesh to the heart because you can be clean on the outside but very dirty on the inside. Some may feel proud of yourself that you are not a drunk or a warmonger, 
But God says, hold on and take a deeper look. A strife here means personal ambition. It's the desire for power, prestige, or recognition. It's the spirit of competition, worrying about who is going to get the credit. There's no place for this in the church, amen? We're all servants of the Most High and Living God here. We're not competing for any attention. So, pag na-offend kayo, hindi ko kayo nakamayan, okay lang kasi COVID, all right? Kung nakaganon ako, kahit bulag yung isang mata, hindi ko kayo nakita, okay lang, amen? Patawarin niyo po ako, pardon me. No? We don't need to be pat in the back, be praised. We know we have members here in the church who are working behind the scene. We have leaders here in the church who are doing Bible study not just Friday but other days because they just want to share God's word. You know, God is pleased with that. God will commend you and compliment you with that. If not here on earth, the best thing is in heaven because you have an eternal reward. So my admonishment to you is just do what you can do for the Lord. Reach out. You don't need to be, you know, notice all the time. But if you do it for God out of a, a, a right motive with the heart, God is pleased. God will bless you for that. There's no place for this church with, you know, discord. That's not an app. Amen? No place with contention, discord, because we have different goals or because we have different personality. By the grace of God, we can be united. We can be unified in the same purpose and goal. Once again, what are those as a church? We exalt the Savior, we edify one another, and we evangelize the lost and dying. The Bible says a house divided in itself cannot stand. We can have Paul and Apollos competitions. Kasi Apollo, we cannot attain that. Apollo 13, that's high, you know? I'm going to go there. No pun intended. We can have Paul and Apollos. I'm, I'm for Pastor Max. I'm for Deacon Bobby or Pastor Sam. No. We all work for the same boss. Amen? We all work for the same Savior. Our goals are the same as a church. We need to do it as a unit. We need to have cooperation. And we've been saying it. Amen? That's why we were able to support 99 missionaries last year. And hopefully, Lord willing, amen, missions committee, ilan na ba yung nag-commit? We're still praying, isn't it? We'll be able to support as much missionaries that we could this year through your faithful giving to the church. You see, it must be all about Jesus. We must be all on the same team, pulling in the same direction. Amen? Envying here, strife and envying is jealousy. Jealousy, it will always devastate a church, a marriage, or a friendship. Can we just be happy to the success of somebody else? That's the right attitude, di ba? Like a blessing si brother or si sister. Matuwa ka. Hindi yung sabihin mo. But Lord siya lang, but ako wala. <laughs> Lord, hindi niya deserving. Alam ko, kilala ko siya. Hindi <laughs> dapat ganun, di ba? Praise God! Kahit ganyan ka, binagpala ka pa rin ng Panginoon. I wonder what secret sin siya. Ano yun? Hindi dapat di ganun. Oh, somebody has gotten something new. A new car, a new house, a new job, you know? And you still, you're still stuck with your old job. <laughs> but just be thankful, grateful to God you still have something. And a brother or a sister in the Lord is being blessed by God. You know, you never know, the goodness of God will lead her to repentance, yeah? or him to repentance. Envying is bad, jealousy is bad. The only person that should be jealous is God. Because God is a jealous God, meaning he cannot you know, impart his glory. He's the only soul God to be worshipped. It's time to wake up. It's time to clean up. And last, I have to start, uh, finish. It's time to dress up. Hi, salamat. Last night. <laughs> Verse 14. This is a positive and negative. Positive is first, you positively put on Jesus. Romans 13, verse 14, put on Christ, diba? Sabi don? You positively put on Jesus. You wake up every morning with a determination to grow closer to God and pursue Jesus. Sabi nga, hindi na to New Year's resolution. Kasi pag sinabi natin New Year's resolution, parang it's bound to fail. Kaya nga magiging resolution na naman. Kasi you fail it. We'll just make it as a Christian goal. Christian aim. You know, Christian purpose. To draw closer to God and pursue Jesus. You know, with everything I said here, my desire is just for believers that will hear this message to pursue Jesus. Love Jesus. Because if you love Jesus, you will love the things that he loves. You will love soul, you will love the church, you will love your enemy, 
you will love your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Kasi nga, di ba? Love conquers all things. Love hides a multitude of sins and shortcomings, the Bible says. So, you wake up with a determination to grow closer to God, to love Him more. We dedicate our members, as the Bible says. What is our members? The eye, the ears, the hands, the feet. The whole body, our whole being, to living each day different than most. You see, he uses the full title in verse 14, the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a here thing. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. Why did Paul use the title Lord Jesus Christ? This is a, a nice across the here, a nice uh, sermon on itself. Lord it speaks of the plan of God for our lives. Lord means simply master. And if there's a master, there is a servant. And we, we know that saying, if the Lord is not the Lord of all, he's not the Lord at all. Because Lord means master. And God has a plan in your life. Aren't you glad God has good plans in your life and my life? May tinatawag na perfect will of God. Meron yung tinatawag na permissive will of God. So ayaw natin yung plan ng Panginoon and we disobeyed. We take out, take on a new course which is not God intended. Sometimes God allows us to do what we will. Nagiging permissive. Pero hindi masyadong bless. Pero yung perfect will of God, like for example, is, is it God's perfect will for a person to pray and read God's word every day? Yes. Is it God's perfect will for a Christian to marry? A, a true believer, a Christian also? Yes! Because it's in the principle of God's word. But, if we divert, di ba? God still allows. Because He's gracious. But, hindi na natin nakikita yung full blessing ng Panginoon. God can still bless. Yes, I, I believe in that. Pero, di ba? God wants the best for us. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So, we need to be in the ways of God. So, Jesus speaks of the pattern of God for our lives. Diba Jesus came to fulfill all the law, to live righteously, so He is our example, He is our pattern, how to live the Christian life. I'm not talking about sinlessness, but I'm talking about always trying to do the will of the Father. He's the pattern. Then Christ, of course, Messiah, in Hebrew, means the power of God for our lives. All right? Christ is the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the Savior of God. So, He uses the full title, can be able to possibly put Christ because you have the Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, it's the grace of God that will allow us to do these things. Lord means master. A slave doesn't wake up and decide how his day would be spent, but his master does. Jesus, he lived the perfect pattern of life for an example to us. Christ, his power defeated death and can defeat sin in our lives. On the negative side, let's look at the negative side. Not just the passive side. It continues and says not to make provisions for the flesh. What do we mean by the word provisions? Provisions are food. So don't feed it. Remember that illustration? Inside of me, there are two, like the Indian, native Indian, two dogs. One is white, one is black. Whoever I feed the most will be the one that's victorious. Same thing. As a Christian, we have a dual nature. We have the new nature in Christ, but we still live in the flesh. We have the old nature. They battle every day. So our provisions of our spiritual life is the word of God. And prayer is the oxygen of our soul. So the nature that you feed, that's the one that will dominate. Kaya nga, ang pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, ang Bible study, hindi lang Sunday, one hour. Hindi, ang communion natin sa Panginoon, hindi lang tayo Sunday, morning, Sunday, afternoon Christian, but we are Christians 24-7, because we need the Word of God to direct us. To be able to be able to put on positively and to put off negatively what we need to put off. The provision of the flesh. So literally, to make provision means to plan ahead. Kaya nga, provision. Pro means advance. Diba? Vision means no? sight. You are planning ahead. So if you're planning to sin, you're really, really going to sin. Because we have temptations all over us. Diba? We are bombarded by temptation. But temptation is not sin itself. But once you yield in to the temptation, you give in. Then it becomes sin. It will destroy you. Diba? Alam natin example ni David. That's just the last of the eyes. Nakita niya lang. Then become last of the flesh. Masok yung pride of life. All the way naging murder. Hindi lang adultery. And he has 
been cursed. May a sword that was in his life and his generation to come. Alam natin yung story. So, don't just fall into it. You know, on the sin, we jump into it sometimes. So, don't make provision for the place for you to sin. All sin begins in the mind. Thought leads to action, and action leads to habit. If you don't immediately renounce a bad thought as being a sin that displeases God, then it moves on to action. This is why the Bible says that last bring forth sin, but we all fall and sin both in thought and then in action, which is why we must then immediately renounce that sin. That's why 1 John 1, 1.9 is there. If we confess our sin, He's always faithful and just to forgive us from all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because if we don't renounce that sin, repent of it, confess it, then we can be able to repeat it and form a bad habit. It is easier to win on the mind level than once it goes farther. Make no provision for the flesh. It's time to wake up, clean up, and dress up because Jesus is soon returning and the saved will go up. Who will it be who will show up? That's the question. Who will it be that will show up? If you're not saved, here's what time it is. It's now the accepted time to be saved. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Before I pray, I'd like to mention this. Here in this service, we always extend an invitation for salvation. We tell you briefly how it means to be saved, that you need to realize you're a sinner. You need to repent of your sin. You need to receive God's free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Why? It's important to repeat that. Because you never know. Somebody is listening or somebody who professes a Christian that they don't really have a personal relationship with Christ. They've never been saved. They go through the ritual, to the flow, but if you really talk to them, do you know for sure if that comes your way, you're going to go to heaven? Has your relationship with God been restored? You have to have a no-so salvation. So if you're not saved, here, what time is it? What time is it? It's later than you think. Now is the accepted time to trust Christ. Somebody said, when we are a child, Satan tells us we're too young for our parents to be saved or to give our lives to God. When we are a teen, Satan tells us we're too popular. When we are an adult, Satan tells us we're too busy now. When we retire, Satan tells us we're too old to serve God. But when we die, Satan tells us it's too late. And then actually, for the first time, he's right, isn't it? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. So if you're here, you're listening to my voice, God loves you. He wants to save you. If you will just put your faith and trust in Jesus, He will save, save you this afternoon, give you eternal life, restore your relationship. It's broken with Him as your maker, as your creator. So we'd like to extend this invitation once again before we close in prayer for this session, for this message. If you're not saved, if you're not sure, just ask the Lord. Call upon His name this way. Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross. You were buried and you rose again for my redemption. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and by faith come into my heart to be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. For Christians, the message is simple. What time is it? Our salvation is nearer than we ever believe. It's time to wake up from spiritual lethargy. It's time to clean up. There are some things that we need to put away. And it's time to dress up. Put on Christ. Put on the whole armor of God. Because we are living in exciting times. I hope and pray that your faith has been bolstered. That as God's children, we are given the Bible. We have given a blueprint of things to come. Of things that had happened in the past. And what a day and age to be a Christian. It's up to you right now what you will do with your time, with your life. My prayer is that we can be an influence to somebody. 
we can make disciple of somebody who's looking for hope, for truth. You might be a young people, a young professional. Maybe you have a burden that you've been praying for a co-worker or a friend who's lost, who's looking for some answers. Tell you, Jesus is the answer. You can share them about something that is worthwhile, that is of a lasting value, and that is the gospel of Christ. Maybe you are discouraged this afternoon. I don't know your heart, your need, your spiritual need, but I hope this message has been an encouragement. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because truly, as a Christian, my future is secure. My past is settled. My present is promising. All because of what Christ had done on the cross and what He's doing for me right now as my high priest, as my mediator. So whatever God has placed in your heart, pray to God. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity that we can be able to rightly divide the word of truth. I hope, Lord, that something that was said has been an unhelp to your child today. I know meant to be confusing or cause any tension, but we're just studying your word, the Bible, which is our mirror, which is our bread, which is our lamp, our light in this darkened world. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit of God that can teach us all things. Thank you, Lord, for His ministry of illumination. Thank you, Lord, that we have a hard copy of the very Word of God in our hands today. This is one of our greatest treasure in this world. Help us to love it, cherish it, read it, study it, meditate upon it. Because as you said in your Word, if we do it, Day and night, we will have good success. And this is the definition of what success is. In your sight, a person who knows God, love Him and serve Him, and enjoy His relationship with Him. Thank you, Lord, for the preciousness of Thy Word today. Thank you for our church, whom Thou hast gifted, with teachers, with evangelists, with pastors, Thank you for our Sunday school teachers. Thank you for our Friday home Bible study teachers. Thank you for our deacons. This is my desire, Lord, for our congregation. As a living church, we ought to be a learning church and a loving church and also a loyal members of our church. We'll support our local church with our time, talent, and treasure. Keep our testimony for the glory of God. Lord, we're not perfect. We're far from it. We are just dependent on your grace. We are just dependent on your mercy. Lord, as we celebrate our 33rd year anniversary, who knows, Lord, that this year we can extend our ministries in other avenues. May we use any resources that we have, any dis disposal resources that we have to reach others. We have relatives who are still unsaved. We have friends who are still unsaved. We still have our own Jerusalem that we need to reach. And Samaria and Judea and uttermost part, Lord, there's still a lot of things to be done. Help us, Lord. Give us the wisdom. Give us the guidance. May we walk in your ways and always continue to depend upon you, upon everything. Bless this week, Lord. Once again, we will face with our secular life, with work and school, we need thy grace, Lord. We need thy provision. We need thy protection. We're still combating this pandemic. I pray, Lord, for our frontliners, our nurses, our doctors. I pray, Lord, for our authorities, our cops, our policemen, our mayors and governors, even the president of this great country. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy so we can still live a peaceable life. We'll extend what we enjoy as freedom and liberties so we can still be able to preach the gospel. Support missionaries. Lord, we pray for our country, the Philippines. A bulk of our relatives and friends still live there. For those that are unsaved, Lord, be merciful. May they break, you break their heart of stone, their trust with religion. May they realize there's only one Savior. 
the salvation is by grace through faith in this church period. Lord, have mercy. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, their petition right now. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to the word of God. And uh, we'll call our uh, Magiting Song leader, once again, Joel Austin Jr. Sa buhok pa lang to be our song leader, to lead us in a song. Thank you so much, Brother Christian. And then it will be a blessing. Thank you. Brother Christian. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sam, for that uh, encouraging and uh, message. And uh, uh, first, I will... Uh, first of all, uh, we have a visitor, and I would like to acknowledge him. Uh, he's the friend of Kaila, and his name is uh, Asad uh, Kapdi. Uh, he's there. Uh, welcome to our church. Uh, I hope and we pray that you've been blessed. Okay, so now I feel, I feel it, those who have uh, teenagers. So for those... Uh, Living saints, please Yay. pray for us, please. <laughs> we, uh, we really, st- we're starting to feel it. Yeah. Yeah, it's his card. I'm looking for his card. Okay. So now I understand. So let's pray for their friendship relationship. We'll be blessed by God. Okay. okay. Welcome. All right. So I'd like to take this opportunity to, uh, to, uh, First of all, before we sing our last uh, song, I would like to uh, thank uh, Bible, uh, Bergen Bible Baptist Church, Pastor Abel and Pastor Sam for uh, giving, giving me the opportunity to use in, in this church. Uh, thank you uh, yeah, for allowing me to be used in this church. And also, uh, okay, so before that, uh, as a Christian soldiers, we have to move forward. We have to, uh, when the role is called up yonder, we have to make sure that we are present. But until then, let us, ha- let us have joy in our hearts. And don't forget, we have, we have a banner to display. No? And the title of our last song is The Banner of the Cross. Amen. Understand? a royal banner given to display to the soldiers of the king as an ensign fair we live and hunt today while as ramson once we sing marching on marching on for christ count everything but loss and to crown him Cross number two. Over land and sea, wherever man may dwell, make the glorious tidings known of the crimson banner. Now the story tell what the Lord shall claim his own. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss and the crown. The cross number three. When the glory don't is growing very near, it is hastening day by day. Then before our king, the hope shall disappear, and across the world shall sway. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but love. Go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, loving God in heaven, uh, we thank you, Lord, uh, 
to be able to finish, safely, Lord, our afternoon service. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for your instruction. Thank you, Lord, for using Pastor Sam to deliver your message. Lord, we pray that uh, forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, uh, continue to make us worthy. We pray, Lord, that uh, what we did today will be acceptable unto you, Lord. Lord, uh, help us uh, to live uh, according to your will, increase our faith, make us faithful, Let, uh, help us, Lord, to do our best. And also, Lord, uh, we pray that uh, you bring us home safe and sound and bless the, remain, uh, the remaining uh, time that we, uh, bless all the remaining uh, activities that we gather to today, Lord. Uh, keep, uh, keep us so safe and sound, Lord. And once again, Lord, uh, we thank you and we praise you and we love you. This all we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So, our verse for today is Psalm 143, verse 8. And let's start now. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my souls unto thee. And people will say, Maranatha, till he comes again. Amen.